Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Bob White is here, he's the CIO of Ashley Furniture, and he's joined by Brian Golish, who's the director of IT. Ashley Furniture, the largest furniture manufacturer in the world, I thought North America, in the world. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank Thanks you for having us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Ashley Furniture, um, tell our audience, those who may not be familiar with Ashley, what the company's all about. Sure. Well, as you said, we're the largest manufacturer of furniture in the world. We deliver more than 35 million pieces of furniture every single year to customers. Um, we own our entire supply chain, meaning we design it, we store it, we ship it, and we deliver it to our consumers um, completely. We have uh, one of the top 100 uh, private fleets in all of North America, 2,200 trailers, almost 900 tractors. We're able to deliver within uh, one week to 95% of our North American customers. We have the single largest uh, upholstery facility under one roof in the world, more than two million square feet. Um, we are North America's largest retailer, I think I said that. Um, we have facilities worldwide. We primarily manufacture in the U.S. We have two facilities in uh, Asia as well, one in and one in Vietnam. Um, and we are, um, as we speak, we continue to grow organically through additional home stores worldwide. In December, for example, we just opened up a home store in Mongolia, of all places. Really? So we thought if you can open a home store in Mongolia, you can open up anywhere. Antarctica is <laughs> next. Um, so now, and you're the CIO. <coughs> Correct. Bob, Brian, you, director of IT. Yes, um, so talk about what you spend your time doing. My role? So my role at Ashley Furniture as director of IT of Enterprise Services, uh, we are an extension of the CIO's office. So any goals or objectives that Bob has for the IT organization, we help implement and execute those. So anything that's core to IT, any policy, process, procedures, um, we own ITSM space. And so we're responsible for rolling out um, capabilities and disciplines like demand management, change management, uh, things of that nature. So you're essentially the heart of the IT, uh, ITSM function. We truly are. We are the voice and, and of you IT. you report to Bob. I do report, report to Bob. to the CFO, COO? How does that report? CEO, president and CEO of the company. Really, you know, that's increasingly <coughs> rare these days, but it's refreshing to see um, a company like yours where the CEO wants to be directly involved in the IT operations of the company. So let me go back to the business. So what's changed in your business? I mean, you got a lot of moving parts. Logistics, you've got manufacturing, um, you're importing, you're exporting. What's, in, what's changed in the last 10 years and how has that affected your technology infrastructure and applications? A lot of challenges. So 10 years ago, for example, we were about a billion dollar company. Today we're a little over four billion. And we've expanded our global footprint significantly in that time frame. And so as our customers, uh, as we grow our customers overseas and internationally, we have to increase our footprint manufacturing capability, our distribution capability. Along with that comes a lot of stress on the overall infrastructure. And so making sure we have a capability to deliver products and services to our consumers locally or regionally is very important to us. So for example, um, we have multiple facilities in the U.S. where we, we manufacture and we distribute out of that same overall facility and it's regional. So in the Northeast we have one in Pennsylvania. We have another one in Mississippi, in North Carolina, in California. And so when a customer orders something in our home store in California, for example, that product is made and or shipped out of that local facility. So we don't, we don't agree with the concept where you ship something across the entire country uh, for that consumer because it uh, takes too long to get to them, number one. Uh, the transit costs are too high. So we believe regional is very important to us to be able to get the product to that consumer much more quickly. I love that. So half the time we order furniture, it takes forever to get it. It's expensive to, to ship it. So you're actually getting proximate to, to the customer. And that's more expensive in theory 
But it drives more business. Is that sort of the philosophy? Or? Yes, it, it drives more business because we know that, for example, when I walk around the furniture store with my wife in the past, a minimum of an hour, trying to make up her mind what she wants. Um, if you're watching this, I apologize, honey. Um, but after the hour, you're ready to, to leave, right? Well, that's then when you have to sit down with the sales associate, and then they plan out, well, we can get it for you in 12 weeks or, or 18 weeks or whatever that time frame is. And that's the last thing a, a consumer wants to hear. They want that product within the week. Absolutely. And often in cases, they want it same day or next day. And so being able to deliver that product to our consumers very quickly and agree on what that date is and commit to that date is extremely important to her. So there's a lot of business process behind that, Absolutely. a lot of service processes behind it. So Brian, why don't you just kind of describe sort of the service management infrastructure, if you will. Absolutely, so before I get into that, one thing I wanted to add to oh, yeah, Bob's please. comments is, um, so as we've grown, right, um, we've, also need to, we've also need to grow our IT staff internationally. And so we've spun up some IT shops in China, in Asia, um, and in India. And from an IT perspective, because we are now doing business and operating with external parties, third party agencies, it's extremely important that we become efficient in how we're operating with those agencies from an IT perspective. And so having demand management in place, having project management in place is extremely crucial and critical because it allows us to operate effectively and efficiently with those teams who make up you know, 50% of our IT staff. And so they're, they're, they're making decisions in a decentralized manner? Is that, is that what we, I'm We try to, so that's, so again, since we extend the, the office of the CIO and those external parties report up into our CIO, we're not only supporting our US and our domestic teams, we're also supporting our international team. So if we can drive that standardization internally, um, here domestically and within the US, and we can get that success internationally, it helps us be successful. Now how overall. long have you been a ServiceNow customer? Uh, six, well, a year, but we've been, uh, um, our implementation has been up and running for six okay, months. Okay, so this is, a, this is good, we can do a good case study here. Yeah. So you, have, you can help me with the before and after. Absolutely. So what was life like? before, and then how did it change, and I'm really interested in the business impact. Chaotic. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of inconsistency. Why, so so I think, I think the, the biggest challenge for us, and the reason why we knew we needed to move towards platform and technology and process singularity was the results of all of these processes, whether it was delivering a service or providing an end user with a, an iPhone, or if it was delivering a, a large project, there was always inconsistency and lack of quality in what we were providing, right? And how, uh, frustrating is that to an end user when they can go, you know, they can have someone in their organization order an iPhone and they get it within a week. Another employee within their organization orders an iPhone and they have no idea where that request is at for, for several weeks at a time. So I think the inconsistency has really frustrated our business units and our business leaders. And so they've really been challenging us and we knew that we were going to have to change. Okay, so how did it come about? The that you brought in service now was it an easy decision? Was it a political decision? Was it a hard decision? Do you have a big, big, big business case? Let me were try you it. involved, Bob? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of um, course it, you were involved, but how, you know, how, take us through the process. It was very easy. Um, when we looked at the pain being caused to the rest of the organization and IT's inability to provide consistent services across the board, um, for example, our project management methodology. We had 14 different development teams doing their project management 14 different ways. Mm. And it was very difficult for our, our customers because in some cases it was the same stakeholders in the business that was um, sponsoring projects held by three or four different IT teams. And they had different methodologies, so we were all over the place. Um, and for me it was about providing the transparency to the rest of the organization. Here's what we provide, here's the service. And not that we were doing a horrible job with project management and our deliverables, it's just that we weren't being transparent about what we were doing. We weren't exposing to the rest of the organization what it took to deliver. Um, they would often just say, I want this project done by this date. And the team would say, okay, we'll do our best. And they didn't explain everything that it took behind the scenes with NIT to spin up those resources to make sure that that was a priority within that team so that we can communicate effectively out to the rest of the organization. That was missing. So I mean, a lot of organizations, they'll take project management as a good example. You'll have a project management system and the only person who really uses it is the project manager. And he or she sets up, I, I call it nagware, for everybody else. And you get a bunch of emails saying, okay, you have to do this, 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 and this, and this. And maybe you do and maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. and you miss the date, everything's red. Um, and you don't really know what's going on. How is that? Is that first of all, is that an accurate description? And how did, if so, how did that change in your organization? Can we take that. Yeah. So I think um, prior to ServiceNow, we're going to be rolling out uh, PM and PPM on ServiceNow this month. 
Um, prior to ServiceNow, we were using um, a solution called PlanView. Yeah, and Plan View. one of the challenges we had with PlanView was it was extremely heavy to use. And because we are a lean organization, mm -hmm. and obviously you've heard we're very fast paced, we have to keep up with the business um, because we're looking at a lot of opportunity and growth. Uh, we needed to have solutions in place that allowed people within the IT organization, whether they're project managers, um, resource managers also use the, the PM tooling as well. And I would even argue that project team members use the tool as well. They have to go in and log time and they have to interact with the system. And when you bog down a team that's trying to move fast and to be agile, uh, you're really prohibiting them from adding the value to, to the, the, the business and to the IT organization. And so moving to ServiceNow has allowed us to become more lightweight. It's allowed us to become more agile and we're really able to be flexible and to adapt to IT demand. So, okay, so um, tell me again, where, where are you starting? Are you starting with the you know, change management, problem yeah, I can, management, I can, incident? I'll give yeah. you the roadmap. So, uh, we started with service desk with incident, problem, change, demand, yep. um, knowledge, um, configuration management, and then um, and we did that, for, we, we rolled that out in uh, December and um, January, January of this year, and then we wanted to focus on uh, PM and PPM. Uh, so we're focusing on that now. We'll be rolling that out uh, later this month. Okay, and then so you're using, are, are you, I mean the strategy is a single CMDB, is that right? Or The not strategy is a single source of truth, right? So all of our teams, so if we're trying to drive standardization into process, we also need to drive standardization into the data that's driving those processes just for efficiency and whatnot. And so we want a single source of truth. And so we're not only looking at just replacing PlanView, but all the other um, IT systems that we use to, to operate and to bring that all into a, a one-stop shop, we call it. I wonder if I could, Bob, ask a CIO perspective on this. I, I, <laughs> we talked to a lot of people, as you can imagine, and a lot of the vendor community, and ServiceNow may do it as well, talks about the 70-30. 70% of the spend goes on you know, main, maintaining, keeping the lights on, 30% goes to innovation. I don't know where that number came from. You know, I used to be at IDC, I probably made it up one day. But everybody seems to agree mm -hmm. that's the case. Um, do you feel like, having a better view of your business can allow you to move that needle. And, and what do you do with that extra resource? Do you, does the company take it back and throw it to the bottom line? Do you have a gain sharing approach? Um, talk about that mix a little bit. That's a great question. Um, yes, having that tool that enables, to, uh, it enables us to be able to understand wh where we're spending our time and the value being provided to the organization is extremely important. We have an internal process where we say we want to spend a, a minimum of 20% of our time on the really important projects that matter to the company. And 80% of the time, we spend in the whirlwind. In other words, we have day-to-day -day stuff, you have maintenance, you have things you have to pay attention to. But we, we challenge our team internally to make sure they spend 20% minimum of their time on really important goals for the company and initiatives so we can take the company forward. Um, and we do measure ourselves with regard to how much time we're spending on maintenance, um, and upkeep, of the, just keeping the lights on, right? Um, versus those really important uh, initiatives for the rest of the company. And so we, we feel it's very important that we have that process in place. And having something like ServiceNow provides that transparency. It exposes it to the rest of the organization, to my peers, where they can see everything that they're working on. So the vice president of manufacturing, system, or manufacturing, uh, global manufacturing, is able to take a look at all the projects that IT is working on to support him and what they mean for him and how they will be, be game changers, the impact it'll have on his organization. And that's helped us a lot in terms of being able to provide that information to them almost real time. Well, if you have the visibility, you can go to your business leaders and say, okay guys, let's, I don't know what your IT budget is, but let's say it's $100 million. So you go, we're gonna, this is how we're going to spend that $100 million. We're going to spend, this year we have to spend $80 million on stuff that's not going to help us grow the business. And here's how, and, here's, and you can share that detail with them and say, okay, let's work together to figure out how we can shift that. Where do you want to make trade-offs? Because most of the application portfolio is probably not driving the type of value that you know, it was originally intended to, because it's aging. And so, but it's hard to make those decisions in a vacuum, because if you pull the plug on an app, the business line says, oh, well, I got, Absolutely. I'm using that app, one, one user, you know, right. who's maybe right. a loud voice. So, yeah. so I would, it sounds like you're expecting that dynamic to change, or maybe it has already. I mean, can you talk to that? It has begun, and, yeah. and it's even getting better with the new system with service now. Uh, the challenge has mm -hmm. been for us to clearly articulate the amount of resources and effort it takes just to keep the lights on. Because the business has been demanding more and more of, from us in terms of providing those, those game-changing initiatives, the more strategic projects that helps them move the, the company forward. And it's, 
having, having a system that shows here's what it takes just to keep the lights on, here's what it takes just to maintain what we have, and there's a lot of work behind that, um, and making that transparent to my peers and to my boss has been extremely helpful. So that we can now say this is what we need to keep going, but now in order to move these other things forward, these key strategic initiatives to get those on the plate, here's what we need in order to make that happen, and here's why. Because if we can't have people spending time in both worlds, it's difficult for them. So we need people to focus on the truly important initiatives and people to focus on keeping the lights on. Well, I've been around a while, so I've seen the pendulum swing. And I actually think in a way, shadow IT is, is helping the perception of the business because they'll go out, they say, oh, we need a mobile app, let's go outsource it, because IT's too slow. Then they'll go have a developer develop a mobile app. It won't do exactly what they want, but they'll get a mobile app, they'll put it to market, and then all of a sudden they have to make a zillion changes and they're going, all right, now what? Who's going to do that? Where do they go? Right. <laughs> they go to IT, hey, can you help? Now you guys have to absorb all those costs and that's why it's so expensive to keep the lights on. And this is a very small example of what you guys live with every day. But I wanted to ask you about shadow IT in your organization. Given that you're quasi-decentralized, um, has it been a problem to date? Um, and do you expect that bringing in service now will, will help? I wouldn't characterize the shadow IT being a problem for us. I wouldn't. I think we're aware of who they are. Um, and we work very closely with them because there's things that we know the business needs and there's people out there that, that are technically minded um, and they are delivering some apps that are important to the business. And so we monitor it, we work with them. And we have been bringing those systems that were initially developed to help the business because they had to move fast. Because while we're keeping the lights on, they're off doing those things. Um, we have begun to bring those those systems into IT and standardize on the platform and the architecture um, that we've adopted. And so that's a process that we've been able to make uh, happen and been very successful with it. And those that we can't intake, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we assess and analyze those and make sure that they're not presenting any liability or risk to the organization, whether through security or whatnot. So we allow some things to exist knowing that we have to. Um, but like Bob mentioned, we do try to, to bring those in-house because then we can apply our standards, our policy process and procedures. So the governance piece is something that you're involved in virtually throughout the organization, is that we, right? We try right. to, we try to, yes. Well, it's hard, right? Because the trade-off is ri risk versus value, mm -hmm. and they're sometimes counterposed. <laughs> and so, Absolutely. And if you get a strong business leader, they're just going to say, screw it, I'm going to do it, I, yep. I don't care. And then they get, maybe get in trouble, and that's when you get the call. Yeah. <laughs> well, well you, have to, you have to pick your battles, right? There's yeah, things yes. where if they want to do some things, and I think the risk is minimal uh, to the organization, for example, um, security, um, and they want to go off and do something that I don't think has an impact on security or, or exposes our data unnecessarily, then go off and do that, but know that at some point in the future, we're going to have that conversation where we'll bring it back in, to Brian's point, standardize and make sure it's consistent with our internal processes. So obviously right. you're open to cloud, you're using ServiceNow, Absolutely. cloud yep. app, I'm sure there are, there are others, but how about infrastructure as a service? Are you doing much in the cloud there, whether it's for Am with Amazon or Azure or other we are. hosting providers? We are, we are working very closely with Microsoft. For example, uh -huh. we have our, our big data analytics is in the cloud, on the Azure cloud. Uh -huh. um, we just went live with our first iteration of selling online for our home stores. That's also in the cloud. Uh, we've contracted with another company, so the goal is to have all of our home stores, for example, as we move forward with this new solution, we'll be accessing that system in the cloud, in our own private cloud, if you will. Um, versus today, they have their own individual servers for every single home store we have, they have their own servers um, on premise. So we're moving to a cloud-based solution so that we can be more nimble, uh, make changes far more quickly. Um, everyone, at the same time, will have change occur. So we want to introduce that change all at once rather than today in our home store environment. We have 566 home stores, for example. We may have 50 different versions of our retail system that we have in place today out there trying to support all 50 versions, mm. which is a big, big pain for us. Mm -hmm. And so moving to a single version of systems will allow us to do that by moving to the cloud. And that has scale implications for Absolutely. your business, yeah. right? So but it was a challenge, though. It took us years to convince right the business leaders that uh, this cloud isn't so scary as everybody is, is saying it is. You know the myths that were shared during the during the keynote. Um, you know th there is some truth to some of the myths, right? I mean there's some there's some things in there, but once you're able to demonstrate a a single solution in the cloud and show hey it's not so bad, then we notice that the business leaders are they're like yeah that's it's interesting because so a lot of times organizations are the opposite. 
the IT guys are hanging on to the on-premises infrastructure and we had that the too. business guys. Right, well, it. right, so our infrastructure <laughs> folks, I mean, they wanted to hold on because that's their bread and butter, that's their job, right? And um, But we were really, I think going to the cloud has helped support them, right? Because if we were to place all that demand on infrastructure, they would have been overwhelmed and they would have been over capacity. Plus, so. if you want to move that needle, that whatever it is, 80, 20, or 730, 70, 30, you've, you've got to get out of that sort of undifferentiated heavy lifting business Absolutely. that doesn't add value. Right? Absolutely. So people, I think, are starting to realize that. Mm -hmm. They think we all touch consumer technology and you know, we wouldn't run, a, run our business on Facebook, but we, you know, we like it and it's mm -hmm. easy. Um, and so we say, okay, why can't we do that in the enterprise? And it seems like the enterprise is sort of catching up to the consumer piece. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, Brian, before we go into, Bob, the, the whole CIO role, uh, as, a, as a service management practitioner at mm -hmm. Knowledge, is this your first Knowledge? Or? It is our first Knowledge. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're cool. rookies. Okay, that's great. So, well, what are your impressions? Let me just start there. Well, um, awesome. Absolutely amazing. It I is an awesome conference. It really is. I mean, just I to say, see we the- We do a lot. Just we do 60 a year, and this is one of the best. I mean, the venue's great. <laughs> um, I, think, I think the organization, the ServiceNow organization is, is um, just well-managed. I think they're, they're high performers, um, yeah. and I think they're passionate. And I think they're so passionate that it's easy for someone like myself uh, to be passionate as well, right? So when you come to an event like this, um, you get pumped up, right? And it's, it's, you don't just get pumped up because of you know, something that doesn't have um, any um, elements or anything to it, but there's, there's good stuff that's coming out of this, this uh, conference and um, we've absolutely enjoyed ourselves. The networking opportunities have been phenomenal. Um, we had actually liked to learn from people that have learned, right? The good and the bad. Um, and we were able to do that ourselves. We were able to come here and say, hey, here's some of the challenges we faced with our implementations. Um, here's some of the successes we had. Uh, here's what we recommend, here's what we don't recommend. So it's been a great conference. I'm getting the, I'm getting the high sign, but I got, a, I, got a, I got a track I have to go to, so thank you. Um, we want to, so you're learning a lot, obviously, is what, what I'm hearing. And and people uh, are learning from us as well, that's what's good about it, and we've only been on the way, platform yeah. for six months. Um, so That's I, cool. Yeah, so you're and I've noticed too. There's been a lot of other uh, organizations that are kind of in the same boat we are. And when you can when you can relate to other people and say you, you feel a bit more calm, but we are absolutely absolutely certain that we've made the right choice with ServiceNow. Role of the CIO. Let's talk about that. We have so many interesting discussions in the cube about that. We do a conference every year with MIT, uh, Chief Data Officer Conference, and one of the CIOs CIO said on on there, he said the CIO role is dead. We went, what? You're a CIO. No, he's going to have to choose between the chief data officer, chief digital officer, chief creative officer, chief operating officer, CFO, CTO, blah, blah, blah. So I think we've, that's one sort of end of the spectrum. Other end of the spectrum, and it's, it's predominant here, is that the CIO role is transforming as the organization transform, mm -hmm. transforms. A lot of it is around service management. So what's your take, Bob, on the role of the CIO? Are you, uh, are you working yourself out of a job, or are you creating uh, long-term innovation roadmap. I think I'd first like to say you definitely have to adapt. There's no question. Um, what I was doing six years ago was much different than I was doing three years ago, much different than what I'm doing today. And so it's all those things. So I think we have to be a little bit of everything. And it's not just the CIO, it's anybody in senior IT leadership really needs to look at themselves as somebody who can support the business and provide that direction, but also understand where the company wants to go and be prepared to understand the technology, understand the business, um, and put in place a great solution to support that. So yes, I think it includes chief digital officer, chief innovation officer, um, chief strategy officer, all those things. And so as I look to my role, and especially now and going forward, it's really understanding what the business wants out of IT. It's understanding the direction the business wants to go in. It's that constant interaction with the rest of the organization. So when I sit down with my peers and, and have a discussion on where we're we going with a warehouse management system, um, what do you expect out of IT in the next uh, few years, um, or is sitting down with manufacturing, uh, the, the manufacturing team and understanding where do they go, where they want to go. Um, they're very frustrated in terms of the fact that we have a monolithic ERP system and they want to introduce change. If we're going to continue to expand globally, as I said earlier in our conversation, and be able to deliver product no matter where she is in the world, by the way, our customer is a she, um, then we have to do it very effectively. We have to do it regionally. So we have to have a manufacturing capability that's very responsive. We don't have time right now, based on the growth of our business, to take three years and implement a brand new manufacturing ERP system. We don't have time. So what we need to do instead is listen to where they want to go, 
and the challenges that the rest of the organization is having, in this case manufacturing, and put in a solution that meets their needs, not one that IT feels would be best for them, mm -hmm. but where do you see yourself going? How can we help implement incremental change so that you can continue to improve your part of the business? It's not about a traditional IT project taking three years to deliver, it's about being more agile. And being more agile to Brian and I means we need to be able to introduce change on a more frequent basis going forward so that the company can continue to do what it needs to do to achieve its growth. So is the CIO a business leader, a technology leader, or a hybrid? Yes, oh. everything. <laughs> I think it's a little bit of everything, oh. especially <laughs> hybrid. Well, and yeah. I was going to add too, if you don't, if you don't mind. Please. So when you look at IT, um, we're the technology pioneers, right? Everybody looks to us to deliver software and solutions and hardware, but I think, um, Something that I've observed over the last several years is we're also look to be business thought leaders as well. Correct. We have to understand the business problem domain or else we can't serve them. And so that's why the roles of like business analysts or functional analysts is so critical to our success because if you don't embed those types of people into the organization and into their processes and into their everyday activities, how can you provide a service to them? It doesn't make sense. So I think we're not only technology pioneers, but we're also business thought leaders as well. So I think it's, I think it's hybrid. Correct. Excellent. Gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was really Thanks a pleasure. Great Thanks it. for having me. All right, me. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. This is theCUBE. We're live from Knowledge15. We'll be right back.